Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Stack. And today I have the opportunity to work on a Daiwa Crossfire reel. This is the Crossfire 2500's 3IB. And uh, it's a nice reel overall. It's very popular. Uh, Daiwa has got this one on the uh, value priced series. Uh, it, the entry level is the Sweep Fire, and then the Crossfire is one up from that. And uh, overall, it spins nice and easy. This one's set up as a right-hand crank. It can go either way. And uh, overall, this one uh, was sent in by uh, Joshua, and he asked me to just make sure it keeps running for a long time to come. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start the service of this one by removing the exterior pieces and parts. As we do, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. I do all things fishing reel repair wise and uh, well I cover a lot of topics so if you find fishing or reel repair interesting then I would encourage you to come on ahead and subscribe here and uh, learn how to do it yourself. Well the uh, sweet fire starts by taking off that spool. We'll service that spool in a moment. Now we want to remove the handle. This has a long post that goes through the handle. And it's interesting because most of the reels I work on are set up for a left-handed crank. This one's set up for the right. You'll notice there's a ball bearing in the case there. We'll just take that handle screw. And now the handle just pulls off. It's just got a hex kind of a set that sits over that post. And uh, when I take those pieces and parts off, I like to put them into a parts tray. I recommend that you try uh, to establish a system for yourself to use in terms of how to... Uh, keep track of your pieces and parts. Well, this is a, an interesting one. I think it'll be an interesting one in a lot of regards. It's not quite the same way that you service other reels, but it might be hard for you to see, but there is a, a hex spring sitting in a groove here holding that main gear on. So unless you remove that, that little spring there, you're not going to be able to remove the main gear. We'll get back to that in just a moment. I'm going to take off the shim washers and the click ratchet. And I'm going to remove the tie down screw that's holding the rotor nut from turning. And this one's got a, a kind of an interesting setup. It's, it's uh, There might be an easier way to do it, but the way that I've wound up doing these reels is to take a uh, take the pinion gear out in order to service it. Okay, well we're going to just remove the rotor now. We're going to do that by taking off the rotor nut. And we'll take the rotor off next. Next up you have a, a series of uh, clamps that are holding down your anti-reverse and override. But we wanted to get to this point because this is how we're going to remove the case. You can't remove the case without removing that rotor first because this lip goes under the case. Remember what I said about that little uh, clip back there? This is one that you have to be careful with in a number of ways. One, you don't want to shoot it. Two, it's a fairly fragile clip. And you don't want to lose it either. So I use a, a little utility knife here to, to work it up and over the, the studs. And I imagine you're not seeing this on the video. I'll show it to you in a moment. I'm trying to put my finger over the top of this so that it doesn't shoot off. These things have a, they are a spring and they can shoot very easily. But that's the clip right there that's holding the main gear on. I put that in my parts tray so that I don't lose that. And now I can come over to the other side there's four screws. There's one holding the bump guard on, and then there's three more case screws. So I'm going to remove the bump guard first. Bump guard's held on by two screws. One is at the bottom. Don't try and pull this out now, because there's another one in the handle over here, and you're going to need a micro screwdriver to get to that. That's a Phillips head, so we'll take a Phillips head micro screwdriver. Try and work that out. That one's not going to work. I need a little bit more leverage. So let's go with this one. 
There we go. All right, that one's out now. And again, for safekeeping now, you can pull the, the bump guard off at this point. You can see the ferrule that that one is going to screw into. And you don't want to want to rip that off because you're going to have to go get another piece if you do. Just going to poke that screw through so I don't lose that. And in my parts tray, I like to keep them in, in the different corners of the parts tray so that I segregate them uh, by different sub-assemblies. All right, the clip is off. That's off. Now we can come over and take the three screws that hold the side plate off. And I like to lay these on the table to make sure that I have the same size screws. These are Phillips heads. Now this one's kind of interesting because this does have an anti-reverse override to it. Most of the reels that use these instant anti-reverse clutches or AR roller clutch or just plain roller clutch. They uh, they don't have the override feature. All right, the three side plate screws are the same, so we're good there. Put those into a corner. You can remove your side plate now. And you'll get a look at the main gear assembly. We have a bearing back there and a shim. I'm going to oil that bearing. I'm set that side case off. This one I'm pretty sure can just be pulled out. And then we have the bushing on the other side of the case and that goes through the front actually. Just like that. And this is a good place to tell you if you aren't doing so already. Take pictures of your work because the pictures can be invaluable later on if you're looking for a reference point in terms of what you took off, how you took it off, what the orientation of the part was, and the like. All right, next up there's a collar here. I'm going to take that off. I guess we're going to need that micro screwdriver again. This has two screws. Just gonna lay them on the table for a moment. This is a good place to take a picture. So we will remove those two pieces. And that has this little wing on it. So once you know that those two screws are the same, go ahead and put them into a corner of your tray. Now we have the next assembly. This whole thing should lift up now, I think, if I remember. There we go. So this is your anti-reverse assembly now with a collar on the bottom of it. That can go off to the side. And then we have two more screws holding the pinion gear in that. Well, this is a little bit unusual because the way that they've set this axle shaft and crosswind block up, it's pretty much the only way you can get at this is, is by taking out the pinion gear to get there. I think a lot of people at this point would probably just skip this step, smear some grease on it, and move on, but we're trying to show you the complete disassembly of this. So there's two screws, there's a collar under there, I hope you can see it, and now we should be able to pull that whole assembly up. So that assembly has the inner collar from that anti-reverse. I'm going to put that over by my anti-reverse. It's got the ball bearing. It's got the tie-down collar. It's got a shim washer. And then it's got the uh, pinion gear itself. I want to make sure that that pinion gear is clear of all the grease. So I'm going to use a paper towel here. There's not a lot on here. I think that's probably what the issue is in terms of let's get this serviced. All of the greases that were on your main gear traveled inward. 
There's uh, very little remaining grease on that gear. There's no grease to speak of on the pinion gear. And uh, the, the ball bearings, well, they need a little bit of love and attention too. I'm going to oil that ball bearing. And because all of this stuff is right here, and I'm going to move to put those back on fairly quickly, I'm just going to leave those to the side for a moment. Well, here's why I had to take all of that out. And it's because the only way to get this axle shaft off is to bring it out this way. Now, there is a screw that attaches the axle shaft to that crosswind block. I've never found an easy way to get that screw out when the, uh, without removing the pinion gear and the whole assembly. We're going to take off the crosswind gear. Underneath that, we've got one more bearing. That's your, uh, your three bearings. You have one in the side plate, one on the pinion gear, and one on the crosswind gear. As you can see, the issue here, again, totally dry reel. There's nothing to clean up. It's all gone. All right, inspect the teeth of the crosswind gear, both sides, and then let's put some fresh clean grease in there. I'm going to use fishing reel grease. I recommend you only use fishing reel grease. This is pen precision reel grease. I'm going to use an artist brush. A little bit of grease on there. Let's grease the inside track where the ball bearing will kind of slide around. That's the back side of the reel. Let's grease the teeth. That's going to connect with the teeth on the back of the main gear. And grease the face because the crosswind block is going to ride on that. Once you do that, bring that crosswind gear all the way down. And then seat it onto the bearing just like that. And make sure when you do this that the stud is at the base of the, uh, the piece. All right, I want to do the same thing here. There's a, there's a little bit of dried grease in that cavity. Let's clean that out. Again, a little bit of new grease here on the face in that slot. And that's all you need to do on this one. You don't need to grease the face. That doesn't have any effect on the real performance. When you do that, then slide this back in and make sure that you house the crosswind block over that stud. Well, this is a good place to, to stop for a moment and encourage you to answer questions. If you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, you want to know a little bit more about the art of reel repair, maybe a little bit more about the manufacturer of the reels, uh, maybe you want to know more about the capabilities, whatever it is, if you leave those questions in the comment section, I do try to answer those. And uh, I'll try and help you out if you're stuck on the servicing of a reel. I've just greased the pinion gear. I'm going to reinstall the bearing that we've oiled. Make sure that you have that shim washer underneath. And now with that crosswind gear uh, properly seated with the crosswind block, we'll go over the top of this and we will seat your bearing. Okay, make sure that you're flush on the bottom of the case with that, that bearing. Next up then we have the tie down. You can kind of aim that. And then we have the two screws to hold that in place. These are hard for me to get done. They're little screws and we don't play well. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on there, try to hold that as I go to put these in. And it looks like we got the first one cooperating. We'll try that one more time. There is a slight indent or bevel on that clamp where we're putting these in to accommodate that flat. Make sure that that's facing up. There we go. All right. Next up then, we can put the, the larger piece in. There is a section here that you need to make sure has the cap to it. It 
goes like that. There's the two sides of that clamp are open for the screws and there's a flat side running against the post here. Now we can put the anti-reverse back in. We haven't put that collar on yet, so let's go put the collar on next. The collar has two flat sides. Then it needs to be centered into the, the clutch. And make sure, again, that that collar is down into the assembly. With that done, same thing here. We want to go ahead and put that tie-down collar on this one. This has got an offset, so make sure you put the right side onto the collar. It needs to sit into the indentations of the anti-reverse clutch. We've got the two small screws that go there. We got enough grease left on these. And then we can tie these down. These reels are nice. I'll call them value priced reels. They're, uh, they're not cheap, but they're not expensive either. They, uh, they work very well. They're nicely engineered. I think they're engineered more for fishing than they are for servicing. But that's okay. You get to learn to live with that after a while. Alright, we've got our cleaned main gear. We want to put the grease onto the teeth of the main gear's front and back side. Once you finish greasing the main gear, you can go ahead and put that in. And then I like to hold everything. There's clips on the back of this one side here. Those are going in. So find the two holes that they align to. Work those over the gear stem. Make sure that they seat into the carrier and make sure you have that slot open for that little five star spring. Time to go to your parts tray and get the spring. Be careful, this thing tends to shoot. This seems to be the way it is. I've lost one of these and I had to reorder it once and ever since then I've been very careful with it. When you get it down to a certain point, you're going to have to lift the one side to clear the little ridge. And once you do that, you can generally get the rest of it in. I use the blade of the utility knife for that purpose. Be aware if you're doing this, it is a knife, it does cut. just need to do now these are these have got flat sides on them so I want to make sure that they're all tucked in and seated properly and they are okay so that's how your main gear comes together right now you can actually turn this thing and make sure that it's working fine which it is let's go back we've oiled the bearing in the case here there's a shim washer on top of that Make sure that that shim washer gets back onto the piece. Now we can put our case on. You want to make sure that your case is sealed on all sides and that it goes on easily. If you find any binding going on, stop. Go back and take a look at what you're doing and make sure that it was seated properly. There's three that are the same size. They don't doesn't matter what hole they go in. We'll 
I'll tighten those down. Okay, just finishing tightening down the last one now. Now we can put our bump guard on. Remember that little stud, so work towards that. Get that stud situated properly first, then push up, and you have the two screws in this one. You have one that's a shorter screw, goes in the bottom here. And then we have that long, narrow one that goes in the, inside the handle there. Tighten that down. And now we can put the rotor on. And the rotor nut. Now that came off in a traditional counterclockwise manner. So it should go back on in a clockwise turning. I'm using a deep socket here. You don't need to use a deep socket. You can use a regular 12 millimeter wrench. Spin it, make sure that it spins nice and easily and that the shaft is going up and down. Next up then, there was a little tie down screw for that. So let's go ahead and put that on. That'll keep your rotor nut from spinning off and loosening the rotor. And then we have our click ratchet and two spool shims. Spool shims control the line lay on the spool. Most manufacturers will put two or three on there. If you find that the line is gathering to the bottom, you need to remove a spool shim. If you find that it's gathering to the top, you need to add one. All right, those two are on. The only thing other than putting the handle on, we remember that the handle was put on from the left side. So, Anchor the handle on one side, put the long shaft screw through the other. Tighten that down. And again, as I mentioned, you don't have to loosen that bar. You have a collapsible handle here. Just like that to keep it out of harm's way. Let's take a look at our drag washers. Okay, to service the spool, gone ahead and started this. You want to remove the five-sided clip that's holding your drag washers in. That's a retention clip. Put that into the parts tray. And now I'm not quite sure what we have in here. We may have felt or we may have some fabric washer of some description. That's a fabric washer of some description. Very dry, just like the rest of the reel was. And what we want to do with fabric washers is put some grease on there. Fabric washers are permeable, so I'm going to use some grease. I'm going to rub it in with my gloved hand, and we're going to set that into the base. This is a six drag traditional setup. Most of these have kind of stuck to others. What you have is you have two keyed washers. They have a small rectangle. They go top and bottom, so that would be the next one into the stack. We'll repeat with that fabric washer. We'll get a nice coating of grease on there. Don't put too much on. If it's globbed, it's not going to help you. It's just going to squeeze out. So what you want to do is wipe off any excess if there is excess to be wiped off. Last one. We'll just do the same thing here. Just work it between your fingers. Place that in. Put the last of the keyed washers in, get your clip, anchor it into the groove on the one side, then pull it around so that it goes in the groove all the way around. And you can usually do that by finger pressure. And then just visually sight it, making sure that it's in the, in the groove. This one's a little bit below the groove, that's fine. There we go. Now we're in the groove. And we 
can reinstall that onto our axle shaft. And take our adjuster button, tighten that down. We'll make sure that that holds. And then back it up. That way you don't compress it. You can wipe the reel off. We can use some rod and reel cleaner for that. We're going to use uh, pens by uh, reel cleaner and the kitchen scrubby. And just wipe the excess of the greases and the dirts and whatever else might be on there. Again, this is a very clean reel to start, but it doesn't hurt to clean it up before you return it to fishing. All right, well, that's it. That's your Daiwa Crossfire 3500 3i. Very nice reel. We've got it going in reverse here because we have didn't set that anti-reverse. There you go. The anti-reverse is working now. One more test on the bale. And for the bale, you can oil the seams and oil the roller and flip it back and forth to make it work. All right, well, there you go. Well, thank you for watching, and thanks to all of our first responders and essential personnel and everybody's working to keep us safe. I do appreciate everything you do. To everybody, please stay safe, stay well, stay watching, and have a great time fishing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.